Hi, this is Clarity Coach Lucy, and this is Tuesday Talks at 3. Welcome to Your Health, Your Wealth, October. WHO reports that one out of four persons who seek health care in Kenya have a mental health condition. Hmm. That's a very sobering statistic right there. Well, my guest today is Jonathan Arenberg. He is a mental health blogger, he's a writer, he's a wellness coach, and he's a published author. He is also the host of the mental wellness podcast, The Wellness Talks. In his new book, The Road to Mental Wellness, Jonathan goes into detail about his lifelong battle with depression, anxiety, and more recently, PTSD. Now in it, he hopes to provide insight on how mental illness cultivates over a lifetime, and if not recognized and treated, how it impacts the entirety of one's life right through from childhood into the adult years. Jonathan lives with his two children in Nova Scotia in Canada. And I'd like to welcome Jonathan, who's it talks at three. Jonathan, please come onto the screen and say hello, hello. to the audience. Hello, Jonathan. We would love to see you. Hello. Yes. How are you? There Good morning, you everyone. Are. Great to or see afternoon. you, Jonathan. <laughs> yes, it is afternoon here in Kenya. I'm just going to check, Jonathan, that indeed we are live. Yep, um, sure. So I'm just checking that. And yes, we have been live for the last two minutes. Wonderful. Oh, great, great. So once again, welcome, Jonathan. And I'm so happy that you're here with us today to share your story. So we're just going to jump straight into it. Why did you write this book, The Road to Mental Wellness? Well, it's, um, I, um, when I, found that I was getting too sick to work, I had to, to, to go off. So um, in Canada, you can seek like compensation um, if you've been injured at work and PTSD is considered a work injury. Mm. Um, so um, I, I wrote a book trying to figure out um, where I, you know, gone, how, how things had gotten to where I, where I um, am today. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was sort of started out as like sort of like mem uh, journaling in a sense. And uh, a couple of good people that I know wrote it or read it rather and um, and uh, suggested that I should make a book out of it. So I, I thought about it for a while. But the primary reason, obviously, um, when you go through like compensation or insurances and stuff, there's always a lot of red tape. So I had a lot of time before I saw a mental health professional. So I it was i started writing basically for therapeutic reasons mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then it manifested itself into a book and i decided yeah. to go the distance um because i thought you know i i can put my energy into this project when i'm able and um uh, i also wanted to use it as a, a method by which you can help other people who are in similar circumstances that no matter how limited their energy is, they yeah. still get a choice where they put it. And um, the book is a result of uh, a lot of hard work, but I was probably at my sickest when I wrote it. Uh, so I think that it's a good, a good testament to uh, putting your energy in a good spot, in a good place. Mm -hmm. I refuse to give up and stay in a, in a bed, right? Um, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, we give thanks for the inspiration that drove you to, to write the book, um, despite the fact that you were not feeling well. Isn't it interesting that other people were looking at your journaling and your journaling was, was more from a therapeutic release point. Um, and there I just can pick out our first takeaway literally, and that is journaling in whatever situation we are, in our lives as human beings, 
we can journal, we can get things from our heads onto paper, into a book. Um, technology allows us now to use our phones and our iPads. Um, we don't need to leave, to, to, to leave all this to just stick in our minds, but we can put it down. And what I have found that does, at least for me, Jonathan, is that it takes a life. When it's in my thoughts, you know, it just stays there and it's dormant. But when I journal, when I put things down on my iPad, on my phone, it begins to grow into ideas. Now, in your case, mm -hmm. I, I'm hearing that um, some people got to read your journals, and that was very courageous of you to share that at that time. And mm -hmm. they encouraged you to, to write this book. And how many of us actually just choose to sit back with the knowledge that we have and not share it? In this mm -hmm. case, a, a very vulnerable place you were coming from, and yet you have had the courage to share. And I want to commend you. I want to commend you for that. Um, I would just like to read two paragraphs from your book so that the audience can have an idea of what it is that you were putting down, you know, uh, pen to paper. I can see Agnes is here joining us. Welcome, Agnes. I've got my guest here, Jonathan. And today we are looking at his book, The Road to Mental Wellness. And I am reading a chapter, not a chapter, two paragraphs from his book. And, and as I read, this reverberating force that dominated and shaped who I was becoming was like a double-edged sword. At the time, I didn't know its impact on my personality and my mental health, but it was the foundation for who I was then and who I would become over the course of my lifetime. This disorder would keep intruding, as it's known to, and insert itself into my daily living, leaving controversy and hardship strewn along my life's path like leaves gone bad. The wonderful thing about this highly sensitive personality trait is that as, of, as I have found, it produces huge amounts of empathy for others because I had absolutely no idea that this trait was even a thing growing up. I didn't question where this empathic sensor came from. It simply picked up on others' pain. And I instinctively knew that people were in emotional distress. Wow. Mm -hmm. that, that's a bittersweet reading right there, Jonathan. It's quite the interesting thing to have it read back to you for the first time in your life. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's what comes up? What, what comes up for you when when you hear those words? Well, it's like first, it's like, wow, I wrote that, <laughs> and then and secondly, it's like, um, it's it uh, kind of sums up the entire book in a way. Um, yeah. So there is about <laughs> roughly um, twenty percent of the population who are classified as highly sensitive people, yeah. and I think that passage is what that is talking about. And when you're young. Um, you don't know what that is. And uh, quite often, we don't know what a lot of things are when we're young in terms of our, our emotional, uh, uh, you know, uh, what emotional regulation looks like, for example, or uh, yes, or uh, what, you know, so uh, when, um, typically what happens is that, uh, for an example, uh, when, kid, when children don't understand how uh, what emotion you know, how to identify an emotion, it, it generally comes out as anger. Mm. It seems to be the default um, emotion. Um, so that's why it's important that we socialize and learn. And uh, so I think that sums up nicely how, you know, um, I was always kind of uh, attracted to people um, who, are, who were suffering. Mm. And didn't know why so uh, you know part of the evaluation through the book or doing the book was to figure those things out you know wow wow i know most, most of the time we look at um mental wellness in the here and now 
you know, now I'm checking on, on myself, like sort of a self-awareness and where I'm at and, and my responses to situations. But you have shared mm. a totally different perspective, Jonathan. You have shared how it can be a slow becoming of mental wellness, you know, over your lifetime. And this is a very new perspective for me. And what it does, it invites me, and, it, and also I'm inviting my, my audience today, it invites me to be more self-aware. And you did mm -hmm. mention self-regulation. Now, all this for me comes as emotional intelligence, just mm -hmm. being aware of yourself and being aware who you are and being able to regulate it. It is a skill that I believe is a soft skill that needs to be taught throughout our education system. Because right. in this way, we're able to, to pick out what it is that we are experiencing. It also invites us to be cognizant of the senses that we have, because we do have triggers or we do have traits and we never think to question them or engage with them in a positive way to understand ourselves better. But if mm. emotional intelligence was part of our education, we would be asking ourselves, why am I this way and how can I optimize on it? How can I build on it? How can I regulate self? You know, our instincts and our radar is very important. However, Jonathan, you know, the big question for me then is how now that we know what we know, how do we, how do we know what to look out for at any stage in our life, which could be aligned to mental wellness? But mm -hmm. let's internalize that as we go through our session today. I would like to know, what do you hope to achieve with this book? Well, um, it's, a, it's already, for all intents and purposes, it's already done its job. Um, um, so it's it's um, the idea the, the the whole idea is like so I wrote it for a therapeutic release and published it in hopes that it would help other people yeah. and um, it it has helped uh, some people according to the feedback and reviews that I get so um, I'm very pleased with uh, that and um, when you talk about things like um, learning emotional regulation and mm -hmm. uh, how did how did we how do you teach that um, well the book attempts to to try to explain that in simple terms by you know at, in the young years it it's incumbent on the the, the adults in the in, in life to teach you those things yeah rather than being reactive you know um reactivity will almost always produce um punitive reaction right so yeah. it doesn't look for the reasons why people do things it's just like he's a bad kid or he's a bad person Mm. so fundamentally yeah. it's um, in the beginning it's so that's the very beginning of the book is it, it attempts to let people know or teach people that you know kids have no idea essentially why they're doing what they're doing uh, yeah. to a degree like on an emotional level not necessarily like on a cognitive level like kids can manipulate and they can do those kind of things but so when they're very young if you're all, like if it manifests in anger as i suggested earlier um all you know is that I'm angry, um, and uh, and you you feel sad, but no one helps to identify or, or parse apart the two. Yeah. So, what yeah. it could be is is um, so in my case, my anger was actually sadness. Mm -hmm. So, uh, behaviors always happen for a reason. Um, in my 18 years working with uh, people with high behaviors and all those kind of things, it taught me to. Uh, look around. So I'll give you an example. So I had an autistic client who would not come out of his room one day, and that went on for the best part of two weeks. So the thing that um, became important to me was what is causing the behavior. And to know that, I had to know what, what makes autism work the way it does. Mm. So um, all in, in the end, all it was was a picture that was crooked. And uh, once it was straightened oh, yeah. out, yeah, right. So I started looking for for um, differences in the in his environment. Yeah, and uh, I straightened the picture and fixed a few things. That, like you know what I mean. So it ended up being ended up being the picture. And after that, he was 
see, that's that's all it takes for an autistic person sometimes is that'll send them into chaos. Mm. So um, he was nonverbal. So it's kind of the same thing as working with kids, you know, um, what is it that's causing the behavior? And it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be uh, just because he's bad or doesn't have to be a huge um, sore. The source doesn't have to be complicated, right? But uh, nonetheless, it needs to be investigated. So mm. that's that's kind of where I hope the book helps people. You know, we uh, I call it surface level thinking. We do a lot of surface level thinking. Yes, we do. So, and the example I use in some of my blogs is like so. I ask people, well, how does a car work? Well, you get in it, you turn it on, and you go. That's not yeah. that's a surface level thought because there's many other things that have to take place in order for that car to go. Yeah. And so you when you when you translate that into real world or or into a behavioral world, what are, what are the what's below the surface, right? Mm -hmm. What's actually mm -hmm. causing the problem? And that's always mm -hmm. been my approach. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you know, you you bring out very profound things in there. You talk about the external and how the external can be, I think the word I'm looking for is a trigger. It can be mm -hmm. a trigger to our mental state and take us off on another tangent. Um, and we don't know, we don't know why. And we seek to find out why, and it is that journey of self-awareness that then allows us to grow into it. Um, I mean, your autistic client is a perfect example. It's as simple as having a crooked picture, but here we are talking about somebody with a condition, the autism, autism that you can see. But what about this child who is just behaving in a certain way? I'm a mother of two children, now they're adults mm. and what did I miss when they were young, perhaps, uh, that I could have been aware of, that I could have been empowered with information to know what to look out for, for a better tomorrow for my children and for my society, my, my community? Because, mm. because the behavior that is being manifested is just like a symptom or like you say, it's a surface level. What is happening? down below and Jonathan you are raising issues here that as parents as adults we need to be asking ourselves and I go back to the question that I asked earlier on how do we know what to look out for just that curiosity of knowing that there's something I need to look out for is where I'm encouraging adults to be able to play in that field it's there's, there's a lot of self-awareness number one that maybe the child is reflecting what they're seeing in the environment. The environment could be the areas, it could be the adults in the room. Um, maybe it could be genetic. Uh, maybe it could be because of, um, of, of uh, their bodily chemical reaction to certain foods that they're eating. It's something for mm -hmm. them to have a certain behavior and it shouldn't be about correction you know you just want to send them to their naughty corner uh, right. for them to take a breather and then come back and life goes on we are way past that now Jonathan this is what I'm understanding from your book and the analogy of the car just does it for me you know now I'm mm -hmm. sold when you start right. that car it's not just about it kick-starting and driving off there's so much that right. has to happen for yeah, this see that, to actually move, yeah. See the see the what where people where people don't invest enough time is so so like starting the car and driving it is actually true. You know, it's the that's how a car works, but um, it's not the only thing. So, um, like for example, people people drive their cars 150 kilometers an hour and and know nothing about what that noise is. <laughs> Scares the heck out yeah. of me. But uh, it's the same thing from a behavioral point of view. So. You, to get back to your question, um, fundamentally, um, we need you can start with doing research on what little kids are are like. You know what their what their tendencies are. So, for example, um, you can use. Uh, so, there's one thing that little kids want more in the world than anything else, and mm -hmm. uh, that is time with their parents. Mm -hmm. 
And that can be a currency for you in terms of, you know, if you, if you meet the behavioral conditions we need to meet, then we can plan something positive or something. Not, uh, it sounds kind of cruel at first um, when you say it that way. But what I mean by that is, is that uh, they love to have your time. And so they'll work for it. And the reason why it's beneficial and, and not as cool as it sounds is um, because you have a chance to, to teach them how to regulate and, and how to schedule and how to um, interact with their folks. So if it's just you and your, I used to call it dad and the lad time and, or dad and daughter time. And I'd let yeah. them pick the activity and yeah. all those kind of things. And, you know, I would sort of insert like a, a moral lesson. But um, if you engage with your children enough, that may be enough. So to give you an example, so my young fella has always had a, an even keel kind of temperament, but there were times where he was difficult when he was young. And because I was able to uh, observe the behavior as it happening for a reason, yeah, I learned that, okay, so I knew that, okay, so fundamentally the first thing I should try is maybe I'm not spending enough time because I working seven days a week. So what I would do is I would set up this dad and the lad thing. And that's what I was talking about earlier, about using it as currency, not, not to hold it against them, but to enhance them. So I, what I'd noticed from uh, putting in the work, which is fundamental, if you're not going to put the work in, you're going to have a problem. But uh, yeah. so after that, I would notice a sharp decrease in the behavior after we spent time together, set up this dad and the lad time and had fun. Um, so, um, that sets the foundation for, that's a positive way to mitigate behavior. Yeah. To min minimize behavior, not, not, not coming home and like you're acting, you're acting up, go to your room. Yes. The yeah. questions there are when you ask your kids to go to your room, the one the question you should ask yourself is, what is that teaching them? Mm. The answer mm. is nothing. Mm. Mm. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so, and we end up suppressing so much, which then shows up in their later lives. Well, we've never had a chance to deal with it. Like, so if you have a healthy relationship with your parents, yeah, you're going to have a healthier um, behavioral outcome later on. Uh, mm -hmm. If I can just interrupt there, Jonathan, sure. I'm yeah. already hearing it in my mind. If you have a healthy relationship with your parents, you're more likely to be open about discussing things uh, that are interesting you, that you're curious about, that are concerning you, that are disturbing you, that are pulling you down. You can have this conversation because you'll be open to it because of the mm -hmm. relationship that you have with the parents or the adults in the room. Um, if you do not have this, and this goes back to the adults, if, if this particular um, environment is not being encouraged or cultivated at home or in a children's home, wherever this child is growing up, then, you know, we are not offering a chance to enhance a child's self-awareness as they grow older. This is what I'm hearing, Jonathan. Well, I think it's important to understand that um, our modern day busyness um, is way more impactful than we know. Like we, we kind of, here in North America anyway, we kind of let our children have their technology and do their own thing and yeah. sit in front of a tv screen most of the time but fundamentally yeah. it doesn't regulate anything it doesn't teach them anything like yeah. there's a moralistic value in life that needs to be taught whether that's mm. through religion or just you know any other means but um if you if you can teach resilience in the beginning they're going to be a lot better off um, i believe yes. so yes and yes, um yes. I mean, my young fella, some, from the time he was able to walk around and show me stuff, he's he's 18 now. He's still, hey, dad, look at this. You know, he still comes. So yes, you know what exactly. it fundamentally breaks down to? It comes down to if you feel safe yeah. with the adults. So That's my the kids word, come, safe. Yeah, they can come to me because um, um, they feel safe. Uh, although yeah. my daughter and I have sort of uh, difficulties, but um, she's, yeah. she's struggling with her own mental health. And um, so... And she's in transition in life in terms of um, what she wants. And she's 15. So I still mm. work with her. But, you know, that's testament to um, working as hard as you can and still have things not work out. Mm. But uh, I don't mean not work out. So the thing about because of the because of the approach that I use with those kids, um, for example, she's willing to to get help. 
and stuff like that. So I, that's a big part of of that. So any challenges that she does have, she's she I've laid the groundwork for you know her feeling confident enough to get. Uh, help that she to needs. get the help that she needs and you know what jonathan you're a role model she's already seeing from you that you, you looked for help you got it whether it was about journaling and sharing with friends before you wrote the book uh, i mean now you are a wellness coach she sees that very subtle things around her in her life and it doesn't mean yeah. that we are perfect jonathan but it is no. in the intentions that we have. It is in the engaging that we have as adults that helps the children. Because reading those two paragraphs in your book, you know, it really got my antennas going. This is the next generation that I can impact. I have lived my life. What does Lucy need to do to impact the youth? So I need to be aware and I need to be able to know what we're discussing and how to to have an awareness that we are familiar with, to know how people tick. And, and so I decided to study emotional intelligence because this then mm -hmm. helped me to understand what motivates somebody to do something. Why are mm -hmm. certain behaviors to a certain extent um, uh, being demonstrated in a specific way? So, mm -hmm. you know, you said it once to me when we were having one of our sessions, you said a stumble is not a failure in that perhaps I made mistakes uh, as a younger adult, but today I know better and I will use what I have today to impact the next generation. And, and that really empowers me. And talking about that, mm -hmm. how has your book improved or impacted your community? Well, um, it's really hard to, it's really hard to say how it's impacted on a local level. Um, yeah. I don't get a lot of feedback um, I saw more online than I do around, but um, there have been. Um, so if we use if we use the mental health community, which is on social media, we um, it's a, it's per, it's been a, um, a helpful journey, I think, for people um, that have read it. Yeah. Um, so um, well, in the way that it's impacted my community, uh, um, so I was recognized by the government here, and I've yeah. met with the mental mental health and addictions minister. Um, so, it, I mean, it's gotten the attention of people, but um, um, so I hope that those doorways, like to government, for example, have given me a voice um, and uh, able to discuss some of the things that we're discussing today yeah. and uh, how the system needs to be improved, for example. Yeah, so, that's powerful. So th those things have been kind of uh, nice, um, been an honor. But so, um, but it like um, it's inspired people to write their own book in some cases, and uh, and some people revisit the book once in a while to to gain inspiration. A lot of people find the book really heavy, mm -hmm. um, so it's hard hard to get through. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. uh, but it has empowered people, you know. Um, mm -hmm. we, we we take what we get, and right now I'm taking empowerment. The fact that. He is a fellow human being who has gone through this, continues to live with it, and is able to put their learnings, their experience, their journey in a very vulnerable way. That's empowerment. And that somebody can actually write a book from having read your book. Maybe, maybe theirs will be an easier version. We don't know. The fact is they took action. And that is what is important. They're not stuck in, in where they feel they cannot move. I mean, in answer to the question of how it has impacted your community, you, you speak about the social media world and, and this is a huge platform and there's a viral effect there, you know, once you post something and, and it can be posted to the rest of the world. The other thing that I'm taking away with me, and, and, and this has been private thoughts for me, Jonathan, but I'm happy to share them here sure. on air. Sure. Um, as a country, we've just gone through our election and we have brought in, elected a fifth president. And uh, we were having a fun time with a girlfriend of mine and just asking each other, what, if you had an opportunity to sit with the president today, what one thing would you bring to the table? So you're having dinner, what one ask would you have? And mine was very simple, Jonathan. Um, fact, 
we have got two hospitals in my country that are government health hospitals. Uh, there's one in my hometown, Mombasa, and there's one here in Nairobi where I live. There's only two of them. And these two hospitals, government hospitals, provide service for those who have severe mental illness. However, by the time you are getting to severe mental illness, there's a journey that you have traveled. And mm -hmm. for me, in layman's language, it's about the stresses of every day and not being able to manage them. So who do I then go to at a government level um, hospital or facility where I can start that journey so I don't need to get to the big hospitals where that is when I have now a main issue and it's, you know, I'm now on, on, a, on medicine, I am now on a program, you know? Uh, so my conversation with the president would be that there's a lot of private hospitals or clinics that are taking care of the everyday stress and depression. And I'm not minimalizing this at all. I'm just mm -hmm. saying that um, I might be so stressed right now, especially coming out of COVID, Mm -hmm. and how things are perhaps not working the way I expected them to work. If I don't manage the stress in my, in my logical mind, it becomes depression. And mm -hmm. once we get to depression, it then begins to take, uh, you know, another tangent. And who takes care of me there? I do not have the funds to go to a private hospital. And when I look at how much it costs private hospitalization here in Kenya for simple things like depression, and again, I'm not uh, minimalizing depression, I'm just giving an example, it's way out of my pocket range. I will need a government facility. So that mm -hmm. would be my discussion. And now you have said that you've gotten the attention of people. And therefore, I really believe that you have impacted your community and I'm hoping somebody is listening to to this Tuesday talks today and in my country Kenya can get me a seat at the table with the president so that mm -hmm. I could be the one who's bringing this up because as a coach I get a lot of it and I end up sending my clients to a counselor because mm -hmm. then as a coach I'm unable to to which handle they have, it which, then, which they pay for <laughs> sorry which they have to pay for um, your the, the answer is um, universal uh, health care. Yeah. And um, the World Health Organization's mandate is to have universal health care by yeah. 2030. And um, the UN is also very interested in making sure that the world has universal health care. And it's just yeah. for the reason that you say so. So if you can't afford to go, um, that's that's pretty... Um, that's pretty uh, impactful to not only you, but your family, your local community, the local economy. Um, exactly. Canada, as of 2014, Canada spent uh, in summers in the order of $50 billion on downtime because of yes. mental health conditions. $50 billion. Uh, uh, and way, way more now, presumably. Yeah. Um, the, uh, yeah. that's, that's, that's the answer to your question. People, yeah. people that are in power need to understand that um, that uh, universal health care is cheaper. It's it's for, cheaper for than that downtime, exactly. In it's fact, you just things, added so. something else for me, Jonathan. If I was to sit at that table, I would say the first thing the president has to ask for is the statistics, the data, because this data then will help him to make a decision. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you so much for that. I can see we've got uh, Joy has joined us. She says, I agree, mm -hmm. a healthy parenting relationship is so important. Uh, Jane has joined us. Jane says, hello, Jane. She says, I love your thoughts on the talk with the president. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> Jane. Yes, I would well, really I love think, that. I think more people need to advocate for for mental health in, in uh, Africa in general, but yes. in Kenya and places. Um, I've done talks in other countries in Africa, and it's and there's some there's some amazing people pushing and pushing and pushing, and that's yeah. fundamentally most important at the moment. Um, the is. thing that it is. Uh, the thing that governments don't understand is that um, there ha there's an intrusion of business interest usually. So, like even in Canada, we have a universal health care system, um, but governments are starting to semi privatize it under mm. the under the mistaken narrative that it will improve healthcare um, 
wait times. Now, if you uh, efficiencies, but, but the the facts don't support that. Uh, there is no fact that I can find anywhere that supports that. In fact, um, it's been ruled against by um, a court in, in British Columbia, which is a province of Canada. Canada Canada's health care is based on um, need, not who can pay. Um, and that's and that's the way every universal health care system has to go. Yeah, yeah. And the, yeah. I use the word healthcare because uh, mental health is, is the exact same thing. It's just another branch. It's like we don't call brain surgery care, right? Yes, very true. <laughs> you know, very true. Go to the brain surgery clinic and get some, you know, it's all the same. And this is the thing that I keep trying to hammer home is that uh, while um, the, the powers that be want to um, or think that, you know, providing a clinic for privatization, it only affords, it only allows people that can afford it and takes, yeah. takes medical professionals and mental health professionals away from the system. It's very so true. It's just basic it's math. True. It, it yeah. does not work. The, an American, the average American spends somewhere in the order of $13,000 a year for health care. And roughly 50% of those can't afford health care there. And yeah. somewhere in the order of half of the world's population doesn't have access to health care. Well, I, I must say that in, in Kenya, uh, we have made a lot of strides with universal health care. It's just now coming into the specific areas like mental wellness that mm -hmm. we need to bring to the table and discuss. Um, with the last president, he has delivered a universal health care package. And, and I've tried it and it works. It actually works, you know, and I posted it on social media because I was very skeptical. But when I see a good thing, it's a good thing, John. And therefore, it is from this that I this platform that I would like to have this conversation. I can see here mm -hmm. uh, somebody has said amazing book couldn't be said perfect. So someone is loving the title of your book. Um, well, it's great, thank you. And, and then Agnes says, "I believe that she will make it." She's referring to meeting with the president. Well, oh, yes, my next yeah. question for you, Jonathan. My next question for you is, how has it? impacted your life writing this book well it's been there's been a, a lot of interesting things that have happened um it's it's nice to get the feedback i think and that's impactful i i very seldom feel good actually like uh i don't mean that that way because i but like just because i cite the examples of action in the book doesn't necessarily mean that i feel well all the time in uh -huh. fact I'm, I'm i'm not able to work so um, but what I do, what I do get joy from is, uh, the feedback that I get from other people or, or, or those kind of things, or the, to know that I've helped someone. Yes. Um, it's not yes. selfish to help other people and get something out of it. In fact, uh, can, um, it can improve your health and longevity. If you, if you do it from a non-selfish point of view, mm. like I could, mm. I, I really want people to buy the book and, um, I mean, I would like to make uh, a little bit more money off it, of course, but uh, that's yes. not the priority at all. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, that's why it's... I said earlier, the book's already done its job, you know? Yeah. But uh, because sales would mean it reaches more people and uh, that would be impactful. Knowing that it's having an impact is just an, um, a, a joy on to my soul, so... Oh, that um, is beautiful. But that is so know, selfless, didn't... so selfless of you to do right that. And there's something you said to me earlier on, and, and just correct me the way I say it, because I know I'm not going to say it right. I'll paraphrase. You said if the book was written for therapeutic reasons in the hope of helping others. Is, is that what you said? Yeah. I wrote it for therapeutic release, like so I'd feel better. And therapeutic it. release. And then you published the it. The motive, um, yeah, the motive to publish it wasn't to become a, um, a you know, a, a big time author. Um, I, if things happened organically where I, I, I don't know if I could handle uh, a huge amount of work without a good support team around me. So yeah. Um, yeah, the book hasn't done as well as it could have. I know it could have done a lot better, but uh, my mental health sort of dictates which direction I go in sometimes. And that's why it's yeah. important to always understand that. Um, you're not failing. You are actually. So when you go through a depressive episode, for example, yeah, that's no. Your your the depression will tell you that you're failing, and that you're no good, and no one likes you, and all this kind of stuff. But that's just depression talking. It's not. 
it's yeah. the, you know, it's not yourself. Yourself would be at working. You'd be doing things. So the the question becomes, how? What do I have to do to get back to where I need to be? Yeah. And if, yeah. And the, and to say quite bluntly, if you're going to go home and go to bed every day for for the rest of your life, yeah. Um, that's not really growing, right? That's yeah. repeating a behavior that hasn't brought you any joy. Yeah. If, if yeah. it's not bringing you any joy, you need to work towards the opposite. So fundamentally. If you broke it down to the most simplest of terms, there's you just have to you have to do it. Yeah. Right? And you have to do the opposite of what you're doing right now. Yes. So I'll give an I'll give an example. So the oftentimes people set boundaries get set boundaries with other people and realize it's important to set boundaries with other people, but people are obvious oftentimes oblivious to the fact that they have to set boundaries with themselves. Yes. And with yes, their Jonathan. mental health. Yeah. Yes. So what I mean by that is like, so I will give myself, if I go through a depressive episode, yeah. I'll give myself three days maximum to rest. Yeah. And then the question becomes, what do I have to do to make sure the fourth day isn't a reality? Mm -hmm. And I use science. Science is a lot of what I talk about. So if you exercise as a human being, you will feel better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It does not. It does not matter that you're too tired, that you don't want to, that you you know, or whatever you want to use. Yeah. You have to, right? It's like you have to eat. You don't sit there and say, "I'm not going to eat because uh, I have to cook it or whatever. I have to go buy it." At some point, you're going to eat it. <laughs> you're going to eat something. <laughs> but, yes, I mean, there's, you are. There's, with exceptions, there's uh, other there's other things that go on with people. But I'm saying, generally speaking, we yeah. recognize that it's necessary to eat regardless of how we feel <laughs> it's, um, and it's so true it's so true so what are we going to do when we get to that point so you start to plan for it i love that exercise. scientific you don't want to exercise yeah you don't want to exercise hmm. do it anyway yeah you don't you don't have any proof that it's not the depression speaking so do it anyway do it anyway just keep moving you know move right you got to fly exercise upstairs. is so varied you could go for a walk yeah. every day Yes. Three, yes, three that's hours me. of your life, three times a week. Yeah. Is not a lot to ask to commit to yourself. So Trent, it's what you tell yourself anyway, Jonathan. If you say, I'm going for this walk to take in uh, uh, some fresh air or to see what's happening, the development around, or just hear the birds singing, or just right. having some thoughts, downtime, do it as you're walking. Oh, wow. Thank you for those insights. I'm just going to read a few reviews. I, I picked yeah. out, I did my homework, Jonathan. I, I picked yeah, out yeah, three reviews, yeah. yeah? Yeah. Okay, yeah. the first review, and, and I will read, it says, um, John, I'm just pulling it up on my screen here. John shares yeah. his story of overcoming mental health issues throughout his life to help others. I mean, I absolutely love that. He begins with his childhood, and he carefully takes you through his life, sharing his experiences and how he's been able to overcome his challenges in the process. His story can help others who are going through their own challenges, whether they have been going through them for a long time or just starting out. To understand you are capable of getting through the tough times. That's a beautiful message right there. Mm. I recommend John's book for a, strong, uh, for a strong story about mental health and for peer support, letting the reader know you're not alone. Yes, you're not alone in the mm -hmm. struggles of mental health issues that's first review the second review says i mean i love these reviews i just picked the three that, that, that i could share today if you have struggled with mental health issues or know someone who has and, and this is very important for my audience who are listening here that you know you may know somebody who has it doesn't necessarily have to be you or even you are just looking for research about mental wellness this book is for you the layers of onions are pulled back and you get to see a journey that will take you through every emotion possible and some that you didn't even realize were there. John understands how to relate with the reader no matter where in their walk they are. That's very humbling. It's a message of healing, understanding and hope. This is a must read book. And uh, review number three is a shorter one. It says, 
This book is a great companion for anyone who is currently in the trenches, struggling with mental health issues of their own or someone who is looking to learn from a lived experience perspective. John has a way of writing that is clear, concise, and relatable, and offers great resources for those looking to begin their own road to mental wellness. I just want to see if anybody has responded to, to, to your most welcome. This was really humbling to read this, Jonathan, and I, and I, I didn't feel right just consuming it for myself so i thought i'd bring it to our session today sure. uh we've got um we've got julie oh hello julie julie well i will say joy is all the way in japan julie is all the way in germany and she says if i would speak to the president i would request for rural structure setup dealing with mental health very true julie and she is in the health profession Alice mm. Njambi says, very timely conversation. Thank you so much, Alice Njambi. She's a fellow coach, Jonathan. Oh, uh, Dimitri, Dimitri is my son and he's logged in today. He oh, says, nice, yeah. yes, he says, yes, 30 minutes of exercise a day will release endorphins in the mind that will improve the mood. Thank you so much, Dimitri. Mm. Uh, Julie comes back and says, um, Julie says, you can as well integrate your walking to your daily activities, going to work or getting groceries. Very true. <laughs> Cars are safe at home, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. This is what Julie says. Um, uh, Joy, Joy all the way in Japan says, I agree working out is key for mental health. Yes, very true. And Jane Kuvuna, who is all the way in Watamu here in Kenya says, those are great reviews and very humbling. So where can we find your book, Jonathan? I mean, after all oh, this, now we want to read the book. <laughs> Uh, well, basically, you can. You, the, uh, unfortunately, the only outlet that I have is Amazon, but I do. Uh -huh. I do. Sell, I do have copies that I sell. Um, I suppose I had I been in a better position in terms of my own mental well-being, I probably would have distributed it and worked harder on promotion. But the reality is yeah. that it's daunting, and so it's like a music profession, or it's like you know movies or whatever. You have to be out there all the time. Yeah, and uh, I like with post-traumatic stress disorder, for example, yeah. um, it just doesn't allow for a lot of noise, a lot of commotion. Your fight yes. or flight is always on. So yeah. I get absolutely exhausted. But so the answer is that your, the book is available at Amazon. On Amazon. Is it available on a Kindle version? Yes, it is. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Well, guys, you heard that. The book is available on Amazon. It would be a challenge to bring it to Kenya. But for those of you who are outside Kenya, you can order the book on Amazon, the hard, mm -hmm. uh, the hard cover well, or the paperback. Well, here, I, as a promotion, because I released it on World Mental Health Day uh, last yeah. year, Yeah. Um, on the 10th, you'll be able to download the PDF for free. On the 10th yeah. of this month? Yeah, just one day. Okay. To download the PDF for free. I'm writing that down. Mm -hmm. I'm writing that down. Guys, you definitely know, you know, somebody somewhere who is suffering from mental, uh, lack of mental wellness. You definitely know someone who's already in hospital, someone who's been committed to a clinic, even somebody at home who is on recovery. But you can hear from Jonathan, it is a lifetime journey. It is not a sentence. So this mm -hmm. is something that we need to give each other support. And even yourself, there are challenges you're going through uh, through this life. How are you managing your stress levels? Who are you talking to? Do you have opportunities for talk therapy so that you don't get to this situation? You're an adult now. Mm -hmm. Which children are you impacting where you are able to see the triggers, the behaviors that you can work with now? There is something you can do in every situation. And I love what Jonathan says. He, Jonathan talks about action. Action is key. Do something, don't sit back. And like we say in my country, wait for somebody else to help you like the government. Don't wait, do something in, right. in yeah. your space. What next for you as an author, Jonathan? What next? Well, you know, I, I, I thought this year I would, I would do more speaking actually. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. So stuff like this, for example. So, and I'm, I'm, I've been, obviously I've been interested in, in um, 
working in places in Africa because I, like you say, you can't even get books in there. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, so I want to, I'd like to extend my reach that way, I think, in some ways. Yeah. Um, well, I'll tell you what, Jonathan, uh, I am thinking about putting something next year, putting it together. And I'd very much like for you to be a speaker uh, during the summit or if it's a Zoom session, whatever it is, sure. I'm trying to yeah. put ideas together. I have met people over this year that have really mm -hmm. impacted my thinking and you're one of them. And I would like an opportunity where I can have a gathering of thought leaders where mm -hmm. we can have these conversations that impact our community. And uh, I'm hoping that you will be available on Zoom so that you can be able to talk to us. Sure, I, I want to I want to be able to do that. Um, I like Thank the video you. medium over anything else. Um, I've yeah. done some things like you type over um, WhatsApp and stuff like that. I it's yeah. not that's not conducive to uh, my mental health and w the way I approach mm -hmm. things. So it's been very difficult that way. So I think my what I would like to do is I would like to find out how to do some local speaking, but yeah. I'd also like I, I'd also like to continue doing these kind of things. Um, yeah, more so on the video medium because I don't have to um, apply. A multitasking i can give you my full attention right yeah yeah you know what yeah, i mean Type, typing yeah. out while you're trying to anyway it's it's, it's yeah. i found i find it a challenge so um and well video. this works this works video works and i'm so happy that you're saying uh, yes 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 oh, well, yeah, no Jonathan, problem, yeah. well we've come to the end to, even if you want Sorry? me to come back i said even if you want me to come back uh, before oh, that is Oh, thank you so much. That's very kind of you, definitely. And I want to send a shout out to Joy, who's listening all yes, the way Joy. from, hi, Joy. from, from <laughs> Japan. Yes, hi, Joy. Joy, thank you so much for connecting Jonathan and I. Sure. As you can see, a lot of value today. We've come to the end of our session. Jonathan, do we have any encouragement on the road to mental wellness? Maybe some three takeaways that you could share with us? Okay, so... It, it, Regardless of how you feel, you have the power to do something about it. Yes. Okay. You have to be, just think of yourself as that rebellious child, <laughs> Yeah. you know, or, <laughs> you know, it, yes. if there's any time, if there's any time to rebel against something, it's, it's uh, in your betterment in terms of your health, mental health. Yes. So the power so, to do something, <laughs> rebel. Right. Okay. You really do. So, I mean, if you go out and sit on your doorstep, if you're depressed, for example, and you purposely breathe in the, the air. And then that air reinvigorates you and you think to yourself, well, maybe I'll go for a small walk. So, yes. you know, and it, you can build on that. So you don't have to stay in bed all the time. You yeah. just, you just, yeah. you just don't think, you just don't think about the options that you have or that you're too tired and you may be yeah. too tired, but physiologically, the way the body works is that when you make it move, it feels better. Yes. Right. So you're too tired really doesn't matter in a lot of sense. You know, I mean, I have compassion for, for people who need a break and all that. I don't mean it that way, but it can't become a behavioral pattern. So self-care, I yeah. wrote an article once called self-care, but be aware, you know, um, people tend to, to, people could have used that as a, an excuse to not do anything. Saying self-care, self-care, self-care. Self-care is action. Self-care is always going to be action with relaxation yeah, action. You know. so there's action there's moving around and what else uh the power to do something right you have and you know um yeah so it's just fundamentally all those things tie into action yeah um, so fundamentally wow. like if you don't have the power in your country like governmental will then yeah. you have you still have the will yeah oh right. i love that the will there's I know I should yes. write this down. Yeah, I'm, I'm writing it down. Yeah, yeah see, you do. you're going to write your book, aren't you? <laughs> book. Um, no, yeah. So it's it's like you're not you feel stuck because you're depressed or you have a mental health condition. Yeah, that's the barrier. Yes. But if you look at your health condition or straight square in the face and say, "I'm in charge," right? Yeah. Not you. Yeah. Yeah, speak to it. Thank you so much, right. Jonathan. Thank you so much for joining us today, accepting my invitation to share your journey so vulnerably and just adding more value to Tuesday Talks at three. Mm -hmm. I say thank you. Thank you You're so most, much. You're most thank welcome. You. If, you, if you. people are looking, just before you go, if people are looking for a way to help themselves with their mental health, they can go to the road to mentalwellness.com. Um, okay. It's a good place yeah. to look. 
I'm going to be putting that into the Facebook guys. Um, I'm going to put that link there so you can have a look. I'll put a link to Amazon so that you can find the book there. I do have, I do hope you have Great. your own Amazon accounts. So at least we can find Jonathan and get the book. Thank you so much. Well, guys, I hope that these your three, you're most welcome. I hope that these three takeaways add value in how you build on your self-awareness, your self-regulation and the environment that you are in. And thank you so much for joining us today to listen to my guest, Jonathan Arenberg, who has taken his time to share with us his journey. Well, this October, we have a special, and this is Customer Service Week. We all know this. This is the week, Customer Service Week. And I have a special for you where you buy a course. Now, we have a course on my website, and this is Courses by LMC. So buy a customer service course on my website for shillings 600 only, and you get your complimentary, fully free of charge coaching session. That's offer number one. Offer number two, if you buy my book, my book, which is The Awakening Self that you can see right behind here, you get two complimentary coaching sessions this October we are giving away. So guys, you just wanna jump in and get your opportunity, but happy customer service week. On the 6th of October, I will be speaking at a summit by the name of Be Unlimited Africa, and I'll be talking about building wealth through customer service. Just check my social media platforms for more information. You just need to be able to register and join us. Thank you. In the meantime, remember to like our Facebook page to receive regular updates and then visit our YouTube platform for the previous recordings that we have had on Tuesday Talks at 3. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel. That is where you would be able to get all the notifications, yeah? And hit the notification button. So let us help build each other, guys. If you've got any topic you'd like me to be able to bring here in this month of your health, your wealth, please just drop me a direct message, a DM. Until then, be kind to yourselves. Bye-bye now.